Okay, ready, go. Okay, ready, go. So this is the fretter view. Go. So it's a fairly arm driven swing here. <laughs> You're big and strong, so you're hitting the ball with your arm strength here. So what happens is, uh, this is the pretty much top, uh, top of the swing here. Okay. Your right elbow is behind your back here. Okay. So that means it's going a bit flat here. And then from here, pulling this down and then hit the ball. So the hands are coming down. So what uh, your right elbow does is from here, just going down. Try to hit the ball. Instead of letting it go, back here, try to hit the ball like this. So then uh, in the down, in the follow through, the hand, hands go high, quite high because in the back swing, your right arm is here and then hit the ball down here and then lifting this high up here. Body is not turning very much. They're not throwing the hands in the club. It extends the arm, but just from here, try to hit the hard. So you need to have a bit, a bit of uh, turning around your body instead of go up here and then pushing this down. Here. Yep. So your right elbow is uh, behind your body. Hit the ball with the arms. And then the low body is passive because um, essentially hitting the ball with the arms here and it's just the body turns like this. Instead of low body leading the motion, mm -hmm. go up here and then just try to hit the ball and then turn the body. But I, I bet you, you've uh, played this way for long. Long time. Well, I, I haven't had that many lessons in my life, so it's self-taught. You know. Yep. And, uh, now, down to you here. Go. You see your right elbow here? Yeah. It's coming this way here. Okay. And it should be more? A bit higher. Higher. Uh, and also, instead of going backward here, keep me more in okay. front of your chest. Uh, then go up here. Because you're using the arms quite a bit here, so all you can do is, at this position, pull this down. When you pull this down, this the alignment. See the alignment of the club here. This is a steep swing plane here. Because um, when, when you, the, the head goes a bit higher here, and as you start the downswing, if the body moves and the this is shallow, then you have a bit flatter swing plane, or, or just a flatter than this, okay. a reasonable swing plane. But what happens, you go up here, and then just to pull this down, the club is going up here. The club is moving like this, so it gives you a, a, a steep swing plane like this. So the club head, as you start the downswing, so from here, as you start downswing, the club head is going high up and coming down still. Yeah. So then, because the swing plane is steep, the club head goes high up and coming down steep here, swing and then coming this way here your lower body cannot do much. So if the swing plane goes a bit flat, or turn around here, you can use the lower body to okay. turn around. But basically you go here, let the clever go high up and coming down, steep, swing, and go on this way. Okay. So then the question is, uh, <laughs> at your age, <laughs> do you want to change this? Well, it, yeah, I, uh, I think the issue is, uh, after all these years, that I have an inconsistent ball flight. And I don't mind, you know, I hit the ball a long way, but at the end of the day, I'm after a little bit more consistency. And so when the swing plane is this uh, steep, as you're saying, the, the tendency is that uh, the ball, the direction of the ball. So today, uh, during the practice, you hit that the ball was pulled. Yeah. yeah. The problem is that then, um, so on the way down, if the hands, if everything is moving along a steep plane, your, your hands tend to stay close to the body. So then when you turn this way here, you tend to pull. If the hand goes around here, 
then you don't see this pattern. But the, because mm. the hands stay quite close to the body, you tend to pull. Another issue with the stiff swing plane is that um, so you let the head go, coming down like this here, then your arm and, and the club are kind of aligned here. So it's really easy to introduce this motion. So the error in the color face orientation here that gives you inconsistent, inconsistent shots. Yeah. But when you go a bit flatter here, coming this way, then you can have an uh, angle here. Mm -hmm. When you have this, it's really difficult to turn this. Mm -hmm. So then the face orientation is determined by the swing motion here, which is a lot slower in the rate than this one here. So when you have, generally, when you have a steep swing plane, then naturally, you can have uh, more error in terms of the face orientation. Yeah, I mean, that's how we ended up down here after watching all the videos of YouTube of you. Uh, uh, the training was, I know my swing is steep, but um, how to say, like the inconsistency, especially in my mid arms and lower arms, um, that, that's what I'm after. It's like to get to the game, my swing is just, um, I, I know I'm not following through. Or yeah, yeah. Through Your body is not turning enough. Yeah. And, and, and I think it, if I did that, I could develop it. Because I, I practice quite a bit, a lot more than I play. Mm -hmm. And so I don't mind. So, I need to have something to yeah. do. So when the, the hand comes close to your body, that you turn a lot, then it'll be really difficult to control. So you, you kind of settle here, yeah. pulling this, and then not turning this way that much. So when the club goes around your body like this, instead of going high up and then coming down, yeah. if you let it go around, then naturally you have more turn. Yeah, and, and then there are times when I can feel the impact of the like squishing on the carpet. It almost feels that way. Like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And other times I get, it's, I get a lot of feedback in my hand. And I just need to boost. Yeah, generally, when you also when you uh, when your swing plane is too stiff, then the toe of the club tends yeah. to contact the ground here. Yes, exactly. When when this happens, it, it can easily change the orientation of the face. Yeah. Then, if you look at my pivot, what you see is that the, the leading edge, the, the very leading edge of the pivot, is open, but this, but it, even though it's open. The finished pivot pattern is pulled to the left. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't even look normal. It doesn't look anything normal. It looks like, well, it looks like the cold face is open, the ball's going this way. But it's like some kind of a fast snap. Left in goes straight, and it goes left. It's just chaos. So the main, main cause of this steep swing plane is your clip head from here. Your, your swing, the clip head goes high up here. Mm -hmm. Then naturally it comes down like this. Yeah. So here, when you start the dancing, if you can draw a sword here, that means uh, you're moving the club along the shaft here, then it's different coming down this way and then let it go here. But if you try to cut something yeah. this way, naturally it goes high and then it comes down. When, you go, when it goes high, it's hard to go uh, to a flat swing plane. Right? Only when this stays here, then you can have a flat swing plane. Right? But as soon as the club head goes high up, then the swing plane becomes a uh, step. So that's uh, the main thing. So when you start the downstream, you should have the feel of drawing a sword from the shed instead of the cutting something. The cutting something. Oh, okay. So instead, instead of uh, cutting something here, draw the sword from the shed. Okay. So this this uh, feel. And uh, now, and also since uh, you're using your arms a lot, then on the way down you're pulling it down. Okay. Pull down and then hit the ball and then that's it. You stop the action. Then it goes high up here, but your body does not turn much. But instead, you have to image the whole swing so from the top of the action. Go around and hit the ball and then finish here. This is what you have to have in, in, in the image. So your goal is to move the club head around your body, swing through and then all the way here instead of just pull and they hit the ball yeah. and then you don't care after that. Yeah. So, uh, so that's it. And then the color feel uh, quite heavy.
Uh, okay, so, so. The club is two inches, so I think inch and a half over standard length. Well, you're tall, so, uh, you know, you can use a longer uh, shovel. Uh, uh, but um, if you rely on your muscles too much, that what happens is uh, also you don't have enough time uh, at the top here just to go up and try to pull this and then try to hit the ball. When you pull the, the grip side down, the clip head goes high up. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you, you're in this position, pull, then this happens. Okay. Yeah. But instead of, instead of that, you have to put this on a longer shaft here and then let it go. Then your body will turn it more. So now the key is you, we need to flatten your swing plane to a certain extent. Okay. So you have to practice on that. Yes. You are tall, but uh, this was uh, used for a um, 13-year-old uh, junior girl yesterday. <laughs> but you, you could use this T position. That means uh, you, are ma you are maintaining quite upright body posture. And you tend to keep the ball close to your body. Yes. More than anything, you have to let the ball go away from your body. And then reach out a bit more here. You have, to, you have to lead your upper body, reach up. Okay. Then from the beginning, you have more flat set up here. Then you can bring this up here. But if this is stays closed here, you maintain more upright body posture, you cannot go this way. So what happens is you go higher up and try to pull it down. Okay. So uh, we need to increase the distance from your, your toe to the ball. Okay. And you have to lean forward and more, reach out, and then make the swing plane flat. Okay. Okay. So let's move the mat a little bit away from your feet here. So stand right in the middle of the mat and then so uh, assume the setup position. Let's see. Okay, that, that's reasonable. So let's uh, put this thing here. All right. Yeah, that's dramatic. Yeah. So for the for the moment, let's just occasionally try to reach out a little bit. Okay. And then now. So let's play with the swing plane using this rock here. Okay. <laughs> this can be a challenge because it's uh, flexible here. So it's very different from a club. So particularly uh, when you rely on your arms and try to pull it down, it's, it's yeah, a bit difficult. It so more than anything, first uh, the image, is, or in this one, it's really important to have the right image. You have to understand the, the goal of the task here. So the task here is to move the end of the rope around your body here. Okay. Okay. Let it go around instead of try to pull it down. Okay. So that means if you, if you want to let it go around, then you have to turn the body and then throw like this instead of bring this higher and then try to pull it down. Right? And then it's flexible. So at the end, you have to wait until the rope hits your body here. And then start the downswing. Hit, and then hit, hit like this. Instead of rushing. Because you're using your arms a lot, so you have a tendency of rushing into a downswing. Yeah. Or when you try to, because you try to pull it, pull it down. Give you enough time in the uh, transition. So image a, a swing. When swing comes up, then you have to wait until this motion completed, and then you push. Instead of fighting. The same thing. When the rope goes around your body, wait until this is completed. The goal of the back swing is have enough turn and then, you know, complete the back swing, then start the down swing. It's to quickly try to go down with your arms. But now, so let's see. Swing the rope around your body back and forth. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is good. This is really promising. So, as you swing, as you swing, so you have a swing plane which is uh, passing through your midsection of the trunk from the ball here. So this is the 
swing plane here. And then try to swing the rope along the swing plane. Back okay, and forth. from there to, to here? About this section here. Right here. So it passes through the middle section. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now already the motion is very different. <laughs> because the swing plane is the flat that you normally use, mm -hmm. then you have to turn the body. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then in the in the back swing, instead of just going to this position here, let it go. So you make a big arc on this side, throw this, and then also keep the arms a bit away from your chest here, instead of going to this position. Okay. So let it go around. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Then what happens is that when your arm travels like this to this position and on the way down, going this way, nothing obstructs your arm motion. Okay. Now your arms are moving freely. But it's not too high. When your arms go too high, then you, you have a tendency of pulling it down. But currently, you're just maintaining this motion, go to this position, throw, throw. So you're just throwing outward here, throwing outward here. Okay. And then simple motion to this position, swing in this position, swing this position. No need to lift this up or pull it backward. Okay. When it goes back, should it drain my shoulders to go further back? You, if you can turn your shoulders more, then it'll be even better. Yes. Ooh, this is good. This is good. So then let's add more speed to the back swing. So let it go a bit faster. And then in the back swing, instead of using the arms and pull it down, again, back swing, you're turning and throwing here. Okay. So both ways, turn the body and throw, turn the body and throw, turn the body and throw. Okay. So when you have this throwing action, the end of the rope wants to go away from your body, but you're holding this mm -hmm. end here, you go around automatically. And then it assumes more flat, uh, the more um, plan motion. Okay. Yeah. So, in this, particularly in the back swing motion, from the top of the down swing and then in the back swing motion, is that try to pull this down here, let it go around. Oh, okay. So, all, all the way, the, the image here you will have is let the end of the rope go around your body, throw it around particularly from the, this side where you start here. Yes, yes, yeah. Turning the body and throw both ways. Whoa! <laughs> this is it, this is it. So the idea is, idea is if you want to work with the device here, particularly the end of the device should move really fast. So when we use the club, then the club head goes around your body to hit the ball here. But the goal is always to move the end of the device fast around your body. Instead of your body going early or arm going like this, you have to really promote good motion of the club head, right? So particularly when you use the rope, you can really have this challenge. So again, throw it around your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you have the, the the image of turning your body about the spine axis here nicely, and then throw it around, throw it around. That's all you need. You don't need to bring this high up or. Is my right elbow still? Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. So you have good throwing action. Mm -hmm. Turn around and throw, yes, yes. Yeah, so as long as you don't keep the, the upper arm close to the, the, the side of the trunk here, if you let it go a bit away from the body, and then particularly use this motion. When you use this motion, then let it go and then settle here, mm -hmm. then you, you will not have to go here. But if you just to try to pull it up, 
you don't care what the, the end of the rope does, right. you just try to pull it up like this, then you go this position. But if you throw the end of the rope around the body, ooh, then you will go this position. Okay. Yeah. Now it looks really good. Swing, throw it around, throw it around, throw it around, keep swinging, keep swinging, swing, 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 throw, 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 throw. yes, now, look at this, how consistent you, your motion is. Swing, 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 throw, 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 yes. Yes. And also, you're, you're letting you go and turning the body nicely here. Okay. Turn the body. Begin. It still looks a little steep. Yes, yes. So we'll work on that. But it's a pretty consistent now. Yes. Yeah. So when the hands comes too close to the body, then this motion pulling down and then your body turning this way, they don't work together. They're not compatible. But if the main, the, the main motion is happening on the swing plane here, so everything is a more swing plane centric here, you throw the rope along this plane, this plane, your body also tends to rotate more about the spine axis here, like this, instead of just turning about the vertical axis here. So you do have all these motions more compatible to each other. That's why the motion becomes simpler. Now, stay here, keep, the, your, keep your feet about here, instead of going forward here, stay here. Now then, the T is a bit far away, and even aim this one here. So you cannot actually touch that one, but just to throw the rope along that direction here. Okay? And then try to lean forward a little. So still you have to have a you know, reaching out effort here. Yeah. That means you have to lean forward a little bit and then aim at the tall T in the back. Swing, swing. Have the image of turning around, turning around. Yes, good throw, good throw, yes. Good throw. Ooh. Woo -hoo. <laughs> so, in this part, you need your uh, more intentional effort to reach out. So from now on, when you use your club, and then when you have a practice swing, instead of uh, assuming this is a comfortable position, that means that you have upright back because you, you played this way for so long. And then let's go for a bit more uncomfortable position of leaning forward a little bit to reach out a bit more. So from this position, then the advantage of this is you can really develop the sense of just turning the body about the spine axis. Turn, 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 turn naturally. The swing plane becomes flatter and your body turns more this way, more this way. So with that, again, keep, the, you keep your heel along that line and then reach out a bit more and also aim this line here. Swing back and forth. Swing, 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 keep swinging, swing, swing. So in order to maintain good balance, first you have to have a good gaze on the ball. Okay? And then use the lower body more actively instead of just using the upper body only. Swing, 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 yes. Swing, good, here. So, in terms of the shape of the swing, this is a, a lot better. In the upper body only. Swing, 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 yes. Swing, good. Yeah, it's a little flat. Mm. Now, the pre <laughs> previous one, here the body is quite upright here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, love that. Mm. <laughs> this is a joke, but then uh, now this is a joke, but then um, particularly when you have a good wisdom here, yeah. then having upright body posture coming down is a bit difficult because 
this wisdom <coughs> will obstruct the motion of the arms. Imagine you have to lean forward a bit more to avoid this, and then let the arms go. <laughs> let the arms go unobstructed. Typically, when you bring the, the elbow down and then elbow hits here, then you have stuck <coughs> elbow. That this is typically when the, the body obstructs the motion of the arms. But when you have a good amount of wisdom here, I'm also <laughs> having the same thing, but uh, in that case, if it's a too steep here, then this obstructs the arm motion. So you want to go a bit uh, away from then lean forward. I also maintain really upright body posture. Um, but uh, now I try to uh, lean forward more and have more turning around the spine axis. Yeah, I know that when I play, I don't uh, have as much of a swing. As I do, like you're saying, I hit the ball. I hit down on the ball. Yeah, yeah. And, and I hit the It's not what I call swing. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, with the slight uh, inclined body posture, yeah. reaching out a bit more, and having a flourishing thing, now the motion looks a lot better. It's just, yeah. uh, it looks a lot more comfortable. Yeah, but, it is more comfortable. Yeah, but this is something that you are, you are accustomed to because uh, you've maintained fairly upright body posture. So in this one, you need to have some intentional effort for, for a while to maintain more upright, uh, more lean position, yeah. reach out a bit more, and then swing around your axis, swing, swing, swing. So now again, this time let's just swing the rope a bit faster than all, all the way. So make it faster, but still you are, you are moving it around your body, right? Let it go, wind up, let it go, let it go, yeah. So then in order to throw the rope really fast, you have to have good shoulder turn. Okay. So shoulder turn, using the shoulder turn and throw, wind up and throw. So now, when you swing in the downswing here, instead of pulling this down, you are really letting it go by using the shoulder motion, right? Yeah. So when you have good active back swing with a good amount of shoulder turn, so the purpose of the back swing is have good shoulder turn and then have a mature back swing here instead of rushing down. Okay. So during the back swing, don't worry about downswing. Back swing is back swing. Okay? So have good mature back swing and throw in the downswing. So and then also in doing that, let's say this, okay? Swing and here, Vijay Singh, Vijay Singh, Vijay Singh. So PJ gives you a more exaggeration here, and they have a mature reaction, and then sing is, has accent, so let it go. Using the white and you throw. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let me record this one more time. And they have a good internal rhythm. And also, particularly, if you want to develop a good consistent rhythm, you have to use the legs a little bit. I imagine this, you're dancing like this. Mm, mm, mm. I forgot the name of this dance. Somebody sent me the video about them. Mm, 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 mm. So that you're emphasizing this kick motion, the throw, that this kick and throw, okay. kick and throw, kick and throw. That's the rhythm, and that has to come from your legs. When you use your legs more, then uh, the motion will be more stable. So have a feel of dancing, dancing. Is he a good dancer? He is a very good dancer. Mm, okay, that's why he's uh, changing the motion quickly. Yeah, when you are you're good at the rhythm, then you can easily yeah, develop a rhythmic motion. Yeah. Let it go. Let it go, turn around, lean, uh, lean forward a bit more. Mm -hmm. 
Let it go. Yeah. So when you lean forward, make sure that you support your body well with your legs here. So without anything here, you should be able to support your body well with the legs here. Have good balance. And then you're letting it go. You don't lean too much and then put yeah. the too much on the on the toe. Right? Yeah. Then it's, it's too much. And you eventually when you <laughs> repeat the motion, you fall forward. So have a good balance here. Mm. Your legs are supporting your body very well. Now, the balance of my body weight, like front and back of my foot, even. So, just, just to keep it, without anything holding here, you have the feel of having a good foundation here. Okay. So, it shouldn't be a too much leaning forward and then having too much force on the toe side. Just have good balance. And then use the knee motion, throw. Throw, throw, throw. Ah, uh, now it's getting steeper. So uh, you get tired. Well, it's, it's trying to push with my leg. Like this, it causes me to sleep. It causes me to sleep. So have, have the image of when you, you have active uh, leg action, that gives you good turn here. Yeah. Turn, um, turn. Yeah, the leg action will actually give you good Shoulder turn. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Like that. Yeah. So using the leg actions, mis misunderstanding here, the common misunderstanding is that when you have a good push down and then your body goes up, up, instead, what we will develop is by using the leg action and then promote this good turn and yeah, turn. Oh. For that, your hip has to move up but not the whole body. So by kicking, and then the pelvis turns here, shoulder turns, and then turn this way, turn this way, turn this way. Here. So leg action will give you a good throw. Okay. And then going around your body. Yes, yes, yes. That leg action is a, a lot better now. Yeah. When your leg, legs are more active, then you have more stable motion. When it's an arm driven, upper body driven, then after the active upper body motion, your lower body is dragged. That's why you lose the balance. But when you turn the lower body to bring the upper body turn here, then it becomes a lot more stable. A lot better in the back swing. Yes. Swing, 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 swing. Uh, the body is uh, standing up. So keep the lean a bit more. Swing. Okay. Yeah. So as you repeat. Yeah. And then it puts a burden on the back muscles. So normally you don't swing this many times, right? Yeah. But when you repeat, then. Uh, your back muscles get uh, tired. Yeah. So, but when you practice it a lot, then you will be able to strengthen your back muscles. Oh, yeah, come around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, swing, swing. Uh, the body is uh, standing up. So keep the lean a bit more. Swing. Okay. Leg action. The knee goes in front of the body. Yeah. The right leg is uh, extended well in the back swing. So look at look, look at the leg action. See, this is the previous one. Yeah. It's a bit passive here. Now this is the last one. Yeah, not bad. So when you use when you use the legs well, then it becomes a lot more stable. Okay. So the rope motion, the rope swing, this is a flexible part. Because of that, you have to guide this well using your body motion. Your goal is to move the end of the rope faster here. So then what happens is, when you use the ground well and then time this well, then you 
can swing the left fast. Yeah. And then you'll hear that push sound. Yeah. So this is yours. So take this uh, with you.